Good evening, folks. Welcome back to Advanced Higher Chemistry. Tonight, we have this treat especial laid out in front of us. We're going to have a look at organic synthesis. I'm planning to do perhaps four uh, videos on different aspects of organic synthesis. I've sort of done one already with the SN1 and SN2s. Uh, once I actually get myself vaguely organized, I will number the file names and I'll append the names. You'll get the hang of it, don't worry. Page 88 and page 90. Uh, we're looking at here, folks, and it's to do with the topics of a nucleophilic substitution um, when you're starting with a haloalkane. You don't have to start with a haloalkane, but that's your classic case for the SQ. That's what I've got in mind tonight, and boy, if you're suffering from insomnia, this is a special treat right enough for us. Uh, let me just go and get the SQ outcomes. Before we go any further, do a quick public service announcement. If you are watching this on a mobile platform like an Android phone or presumably an iPhone as well, I don't know, I don't speak Apple. Um, if you're using the standard YouTube browser, then apparently adverts have been popping up already in my videos. How annoying is that? Instead, what you need to do is download Firefox browser for your mobile device and then Firefox lets you put advert blockers on. No more adverts in YouTube videos. How good is that? A, right, let's have a look at nucleophilic substitutions, starting with haloalkanes. Just realised I've drawn four arrows on here. Only three of them are nucleophilic substitution reactions, because uh, I'm an idiot. Uh, the fourth one, I'll maybe come back to in a different video entirely. It's an elimination reaction. So let's do the first one here. Number one. You can take a... It's a bit like Lego, basically. We can start here and we can unplug this halogen. This is a monohaloalkane, by the way, as in it's an alkane with a single halogen atom on it. Uh, this They can be classified as primary, secondary, or tertiary, these monohaloalkanes, just in case they hit you with that in the exam. This, of course, just like alcohols, is a primary because the halogen is attached to a carbon, which is attached to only one other carbon. Or in normal English, if it's stuck on the end of the chain, it being the halogen, then it's a primary. If it's in the middle of the chain, it's a secondary. And if it's the middle opposite another carbon here, then it's a tertiary, just like alcohol. Uh, just like alcohols. Go and watch the alcohol video if you're not sure from higher to revise. The first thing they want you to be able to react these guys with is sodium hydroxide, or any hydroxide, in fact. It's basically an aqueous hydroxide that you need to do. It must be aqueous. Although I said I wouldn't do the fourth arrow, I might just do it for comparison, for contrast. So sodium or potassium, whatever. The main thing, of course, is you've got plenty of OH- ions. These are nucleophiles because they're negative. Uh, therefore, they will indulge in a nucleophilic substitution. I'll literally pull that off, plop that on instead, and you will end up making, in this case, propan one all. Oops, knocking my lighting rig. Honestly, can't get the staff these days. I can't be bothered doing the rest of the hydrogens. Let's just leave it there for simplicity. So you can make alcohols from haloalkanes. That's the first substitution reaction. The second substitution reaction, I think I'll do... Um, yeah, let's do ethers. Now, I've got a video on ethers, which is separate. I'll try and put a link up here somewhere. Um, or I can put the link down in the description. Or you can just find it by finding ethers on my channel. Nobody's broken your fingers. You can Google it. What is an ether? Well, an ether is a, a carbon-oxygen sandwich. So there's carbons on one side, oxygen, more carbons over here. I'm repeating myself. Go and watch the ethers video. How do you make them? Well, you need an alcoholic alkoxide. <laughs> what on earth is that? It's something along the lines of sodium, let's do sodium ethoxide in this case. So O, CH2, CH3. This is the ethoxide ion. Again, the sodium's not really important. It's just a counter ion. This is what we need because this also is our nucleophile. So this is going to come into attack, get rid of this, and we're going to make this molecule here. which is an ether. I did tell you it was a carbon-oxygen-carbon -carbon sandwich. Um, and the naming of ethers, I go over it in my video. This is basically ethoxypropane. Uh, so you can make alcohols. You can make ethers. 
which is a brand new family to us at Advanced Hire. And lastly, um, we can react this chlorpropane with what's called, oh sorry, before I leave any further, my subconscious was telling me that I had not finished this properly and I hadn't. This gets dissolved in ethanol. So this is actually, that's why it's called an ethanolic or alcoholic alkoxide. So it's not dissolved in water, it's not AQ, it's ETH. So this is dissolved in ethanol. That's the solvent for this reaction. If you try using an aqueous solvent, then you're going to end up screwing the reaction up and end up with an alcohol instead because there's hydroxides around. So that's what this needs to be dissolved in ethanol, folks. Unusual solvent C2H5OH. That's the solvent for this reaction. Whereas the solvent for this reaction was just water. Let's do the third one. It's another... Um, it's ethanolic cyanide, specifically ethanolic cyanide we're reacting here. What on earth is that? Well, this is basically, say, for example, uh, casein, potassium cyanide. Once again, in ethanol, C2H5OH, not in water. I suppose you could have a HCN, a little bit on the dangerous side, hydrogen cyanide. So potassium cyanide, much safer. Dissolve it in ethanol, and this time our nucleophile is the CN, the cyanide uh, nucleophile. So we're going to knock this off and replace the chlorine with CN. One, two, three, uh, and C. And I'm actually going to show the details of that. It's actually a triple bond there. And what we've made is a nitrile. Now I'm showing my age here. I just went to go double check the arrangements. You don't have to know how to name these things. You do need to know that it is what's called a nitrile though. That is our new molecule. Why on earth would you want to do that? What's special about these? Well, we started with three carbons and now we have four through the power of chemistry. One, two, three, four carbons. So I actually managed to change the carbon chain length. But it doesn't look like there's anything available here because we've triple bonded it. What you can actually do, though, and what they say you can do, is that you can hydrolyze this bond here by reacting your nitrile with any aqueous acid. So basically H2O and H+. So any normal dilute acid will chop the details of this uh, bond here. Well, sorry, we'll chop the bond here. What do you make? Well... Last year I had Ellie McDougall in my class and she was really keen to know what actually goes on because you end up making this molecule here. Now if I can keep my notation the same one. Still on camera? Yeah, we're still on camera. Good, let's move up a touch so we can see. Uh, one, two, three, and our fourth carbon that we added on. And we actually end up producing, as if by magic, a carboxylic acid. Um, and yeah, and Ellie wanted to know the details of this mechanism, so I couldn't remember it either. So we looked it up and we were both very th thankful. You don't need to know the details because it's horrendously complex. But nevertheless, what we've done is managed to go from three carbons with a chlorine through to a nitrile. Now we've got four carbons and then we've got this uh, through hydrolysis. They require you to know that this is a hydrolysis reaction. Again, you know, all these will be asked about in questions. Why would you want to do that? Well, what you could in theory do now, if I can separate off this, I could do with starting a new piece of paper. Honestly, amateur hour. What you could do is you could treat that with um, a reducing agent and you could reduce this down to butan one all. And I suppose you could then in theory replace the hydroxide on your butan one all with the chlorine. So you could actually go from propan, sorry, one chloropropane to one chlorobutane using this system here. My fourth arrow is in serious contrast to my first arrow. I think I'll do this anyway. Let me just check. Yeah, let's do it. Um, although it's not a nucleophilic substitution, it does sort of go hand in hand with this one as a very nice contrast. Because if you take a strong base, like for example, sodium hydroxide, like we had over here, this time, however, if you dissolve the sodium hydroxide in ethanol, so ethanolic sodium hydroxide, a little ETH again, is sometimes how they show it, or alternatively, they'll say sodium hydroxide in C2H5. 
five O H. You get a seriously different reaction going on here. We need a diff totally different color for this because what we're going to do is we are going to rip this chlorine off. We're also going to rip a neighboring hydrogen off. Uh, they will go off hand in hand. The sunset as hydrochloric acid, and we will create one, two, three carbons. Only this time we will have a double bond. So we've managed to create an alkene. This reaction is not a nucleophilic substitution. As I said, in fact, it deserves its own entirely color. Let's put it in bright red just to clarify that this is elimination. That's what this is. And if you do sodium hydroxide in ethanol, you get elimination. Whereas if you do sodium hydroxide in water, you get substitution instead. Seriously different. I think that'll do it for today just now. Thanks for listening, folks. Bye-bye.